order to try and keep with our budget, we made a few other decisions on this car. First off, we decided to go with uh, rubber fuel lines rather than the uh, AN lines and braided lines that everybody goes with. So in order to do that, I took a stock fuel line right here and stripped off the metal piece so I could screw our high pressure line straight to it. I didn't scrimp on the fuel pressure regulator though. I use an AEM unit, which I got used for a pretty good price, but it's still, you don't want to scrimp on fuel pressure regulators because that, that could cause damage to your engine if you get a bad one or a cheap one. Now in order to be able to use the quick disconnect, stock quick disconnects, I actually took a cut line that had come with the motor and I split apart the plastic and pulled out the small metal quick disconnect part. And that was basically hose clamped onto our rubber hose and it works really slick. Another thing we did, is on our clutch line. I went down and purchased a 20 inch metric brake line from Napa Auto Parts and I bent a custom clutch line. That way I was avoiding the $125 line that everybody makes that goes all the way from your clutch uh, master cylinder all the way to the slave cylinder. This was a much less expensive choice and uh, I was then able to use the stock hard lines to uh, do the rest of the connection and that actually had come with my transmission. For the mount kit, we decided to go with a Hasport mount kit. One of the reasons, of course, because I work for Hasport. But also, this allowed us to use the Accord transmission, which was a lot less expensive. The shifter cables are from the Accord. They're less than half the price of the RSX Type S shifter cables. This is one of the reasons we decided to go with the Accord transmission, because we could use those shifter cables. At some point, if I get a craving for a six-speed, what I'll probably do is sell off this transmission and buy a TSX six-speed. I'm not going to probably be racing this car a lot, so it's not important to me that I have nice close ratios like the SI does. This is going to be more of a, a street car. The advantage of the dual height mounts is it keeps the head in the same place. What that means is if you want hood clearance, you can uh, mount the K24 at the lower position and then it won't interfere with the hood. Actually, I prefer ground clearance, so I'm gonna mount it up higher where you normally would mount a K20. We, if you notice here, we've actually cut out some of the hood structure in order to make clearance for the head. If I wanted to run, run power steering, I would mount it at the lower position. That gives me room for the power steering pump and also gives me clearance for the hood. For the radiator, we decided to go ahead and stick with the stock radiator. We already owned it, we didn't have to buy a new one. In order to make it fit, you have to move it over to the other side. That process was actually pretty simple. What we did was we cut off the mounting tab that was on this side over here. Then we moved the radiator over, put the right post in, which would have been the left post hole. Once we did that, we moved the tab over and welded it in place so that it fit well, made the radiator nice and level. Now that allows us to get access to the outlets for the radiator. We can hook them up to the motor. A couple things about this intake. Uh, obviously, there's no uh, short round intake for the Accord because the air box is over here on the Accord, and you know this engine doesn't typically go inside here. Another thing, uh, the intake air temp, temp sensor is uh, on the intake air tube, uh, actually starting at 96 out, but of course it's uh, on the Accord. Uh, one of the things I did to save money was I grabbed an intake air temp sensor for a 96 Civic, which was much less expensive as an aftermarket part in uh, part stores. I actually got this out of the salvage yard, so it cost me like two bucks. And uh, then I took the, the plug that uh, goes on that and spliced it onto the uh, harness instead of uh, using the, the stock one, which is uh, uh, which I didn't get with the engine or the harness. So I changed it to save a few bucks. Burn this candle. Okay, we got it running, ready for a test drive. 
I'm kind of curious to see if we made our $3,000 price point. It would be really slick if we could do a K-Series swap for the price of a B-Series swap. Anyway, our next goal with the car is to try to get 200 horsepower. Try to get Type S power out of our inexpensive swap. I wonder what kind of modifications that's going to require. Okay guys, time for the moment of truth. We've done our K24 swap and we've kept a nice list of every part we use in the price. We totaled it all up. Remember our goal here is to do it for under $3,000. $3,000 is kind of the typical price of a B16 swap. Kind of do it yourself B16 swap. Anyway, our grand total is $3,285. <laughs> That's a little bit more than I wanted to spend. I was really hoping to keep it under $3,000, but there are a lot of parts involved in this swap. So I think we really did well anyway. And I still think of this as a win. I mean, think about it. The B16 is about 160 horsepower. The K24, which is also 160 horsepower, has a lot more torque. I think this car is gonna just eat up B16 swap Civics. In fact, I think they'll eat up B18C swap Civics. So what I'd really like to do is get Aaron out with his B18C powered EG and do a little testing with him and see which car is faster. So maybe we can do that in an upcoming video. Anyway, if you're interested in more details about our swap list and our parts, go ahead and head over to VTech Academy and uh, check out, I'm gonna be building a series of articles that's gonna go and outline every one of the parts we use and how we use them. And on top of that, I'll also give you some alternative parts and their prices as well. So go ahead and check that out if you don't mind. Now, last but not least, I really wanna take this car for a test drive. So I think we need to do that next.